So I got a question a few days ago about growing on YouTube and I just wanted to kind of lay out my process and show you kind of how I go about doing things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you through my entire process and then give you some tips and tricks on how to grow on YouTube. So Dylan Tom on Twitter says this YouTube thing is harder than it looks. How do you make such good videos at Real Zach B? What I want to do is I want to kind of take you through my process for making videos and give you some little tips and tricks on how to increase your quality. So there's three main stages of video and that's going to be your pre-production or your planning stage, your production or recording stage, and then your post-production, which is editing. Let's start out and we'll go in order. We'll start with pre-production and planning. The first thing you want to do as soon as you think of an idea is identify the strategies or the goals of the video. This is going to be where you identify what the purpose of the video is. If your video doesn't have a purpose, it's not going to work. Even videos on Twitter, I make sure that I always identify the goals and the strategies that I'm going to use, even if it's just a 30 second video and I'm not technically like scripting it or doing any sort of editing to it, I still always make sure that I identify the strategies and the goals. I have this little tiny notepad here, which is made by post-it. It's like mini post-it notes. And I always write down my goals on there and then I just throw them away when I'm done. But I always make sure that I identify a strategy for how I'm gonna use the video and the goals for how I'm gonna get the video to blow up and how I'm gonna share the video. Now it's important to note that sometimes your goals might be different. Your goals are not always just to grow. Sometimes your goals are like this video here, which is to make a connection. I know Dylan reached out on Twitter so I figured I'd reach back out, but it was also to make sure that I create a piece of content this week. A little backstory is Dylan asked this question actually two days ago, but I'm currently sitting at home with 102 degree fever. So I am not really happy that I had to record this video, but I'm still getting the video out. And the goal of this video is to get some content out even when I don't feel good. The second step is to create a script. This doesn't have to be a word for word. This is what I'm gonna say. This can be like a speech where if I'm gonna deliver a speech, I'm gonna write out a bullet point list. In this video, my list and my script script is the process chart. So I'm kind of just go pulling out the ideas in my head, but I'm also using the process chart as the storyboard or script. So right alongside the script, after you get it done, you want to start to storyboard out your video. You want to know what stock footage you're going to use, what pieces of B-roll you need to have. I like to storyboard my videos so I know what's going in which place and what kind of the sequence of events are going to be in my video. So the next step is production and recording your video. And this is going to be a big part of equipment. We want to look at SLV as the acronym that I always use, which is sound, light, and video. Those are the three most important things that you need to have to have good quality video. As far as sound goes, I really like the Blue Yeti microphone. If you can invest in a good quality microphone, I highly recommend using a condenser microphone because you don't turn up the levels as much in editing and it produces a better quality content. I like to have the microphone fairly close to my face and I like to have the gain all the way down if possible. I know if you have the microphone further away, you need to turn the gain up, that's okay, but I'm gonna produce a lot higher quality content having the mic right here and having the gain all the way down for lights i use umbrella lights so i have two of them i have one that way and one that way the reason i like umbrella lights over ring lights is ring lights have a very bad glare if you wear glasses and umbrella lights do not really have that problem the big reason i like them is they're just like lights they're not like they're shining directly into your eyes because i cannot look into a ring light for more than 10 15 minutes without going blind these lights i pretty much just keep on all day and they just light up my desk as far as video goes i highly recommend the iPhone camera. Now this might surprise a lot of people. I record on an iPhone. I use continuity camera from my desktop and I also really like just to record using cinematic mode. I have an iPhone 14 Pro so that's what I use but even if you have an older iPhone the camera on the iPhone is so much better than 95% of cameras out there that you can get for under a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. I'm able to record this video and on cinematic mode in 4k at 24 frames per second so that's kind of what my goal is. However, sometimes I do scale it down in post-production. Obviously the files can be big. This video, I'll probably scale down to 1080. Uh, I might keep it in 4k just as an example video, but I do really like the iPhone's ability to record super high quality and uh, super quick. And also if it's really great for B-roll, especially if you have spur of the moment B-roll stuff that you need to record and when you don't want to carry around to camera. So the next step is going to be to record your video. After you make sure you get your equipment in check, you just want to record your video. Don't do it in one take. You can record it in one take, but definitely make sure you don't like try to stop it every time you mess up because I actually recorded the whole video last night about 11 then I realized afterwards that I was just super low energy and didn't have any energy and I still don't really have that much energy but got a good old-fashioned energy drink to keep me awake as well as recording your video you definitely want to record some voiceover if you're doing anything with b-roll that you don't want to record and also sometimes like this video I'm just going to record the whole thing all the way through and then edit it up afterwards and add the b-roll but like right now with this piece of b-roll up 
this pretty cool piece of b-roll but you don't see me but my voiceover is still happening while i'm recording so i can always cut back to myself and at any time i'm able to just continue talking as normal sometimes it is nice to have voiceovers on b-roll that you just don't record here but i usually just like to record all my stuff in one take and then the next step is to capture your b-roll if you've done a good job of storyboarding you don't have too much to plan out here but i do like to plan a little bit more here and do a more in-depth plan of how i'm going to do my b-roll and then capture my b-roll typically for my b-roll I just use stock footage because it's easier for me, but sometimes I do capture my own b-roll. The people I work with, I highly advise to capture their own b-roll because it definitely makes the videos more engaging. So now we're going to move into the post-production and editing phase. The first step is to adjust your storyboard. Obviously, as you record, uh, things are kind of going to get screwed up and you don't want to have an incorrect storyboard. I typically like to use a whiteboard or sometimes even a large poster board. I'll just use it and throw it away after. I know it's maybe not the greatest way to go about it, but I do like to use that. That. If I'm not using that, I'm typically using an iPad and using Notability to kind of storyboard out my videos. Most people would be surprised at the amount of storyboarding that I actually use in my videos. It does take me a little bit longer, but I definitely have a better quality video at the end of the day. Storyboarding is definitely overlooked by many because it just is another task to do. But as far as storyboarding goes, definitely a must if you really want to have great video. Next, let's talk about editing. Used to be my favorite part, but it's too tiring for me now. I hire out most of my editing. Any sort of editing that's a deliverable for my video marketing agency I try to hire out. The big things you want to make sure you're doing in editing is making sure that you are using the right software. There's a lot of editing software out there. I highly recommend investing in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. Final Cut Pro is my personal choice, but I also know how to do Premiere. I used to use Premiere a lot more, but I decided that Final Cut Pro was just easier for me. It's a little bit easier to match things together. When I first started doing video editing, I used iMovie. Final Cut Pro is just like a beefed up version of iMovie. So if you're on Mac, I highly recommend Final Cut Pro over Premiere. But if you're on Windows, I'd highly recommend you check out Premiere. On my phone, I know not everybody has access to a computer. CapCut is fantastic. I actually kind of starting to use CapCut to do shorts and that kind of stuff because it's just way easier for me. If I'm on the go, I can crank out a few short videos and crank out a few long form videos even on CapCut if I'm on the go. The next thing you want to do is find supporting graphics. I use Motion Array. I use that for pretty much all my motion graphics as well as stock footage, stock sounds, and my music selection. They have a great selection over at Motion Array, so I'd highly recommend you go check them out. So along with my supporting graphics, like I said, I want to make sure that I select the right music here. A little tip is to make sure that your music is not too loud. Do you want to not listen to it with headphones, but you want to listen to it on speaker mode with your volume all the way up because that is typically how people will listen to it. This is something that it took me a long time to figure out and I'm hoping I can save you a little bit of time here. Video sounds different with headphones in. The audio levels just change. It's hard to believe, but it does. So make sure when you're editing your videos to check it with your audio on full volume on speaker mode without headphones. And then the last step is deliver even if you're not an agency, you do need to have the delivery stage. The delivery stage basically means you're planning out what platforms things should go on. You want to make sure that you have a plan for those platforms and you know exactly how it's going to get uploaded, who's going to upload it, and what the caption should be, that kind of stuff. I typically organize all that just in my Apple Notes right now, but I also sometimes do use different platforms to organize those, such as Airtable or some more advanced stuff for clients. Video creation, it's not easy. That's why you should hire somebody. I'm not saying hire me. That's not what my words are saying right now. I'm saying hire somebody. Editing is definitely a very hard process, and you don't want to take away from your time that you can spend building your business or even spend time with your family. Yesterday, Day, I was super sick throwing up. I felt super guilty that I took time off, but you need to be able to establish your business so that you can take the time off that you need. Editing is just one less thing you need to worry about. And it's a good thing to get off of your shoulders. So I'd highly recommend if you are looking for editing, hire somebody. If you got any other specific questions, you can always email me. My email is zach at dozerdogdesigns.com. I'll pop that up on screen right now, as well as you can always text my hotline 980-288-8295 with any sort of questions you have. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch y'all next time.